Here's the grid lineup for the third and final race for the Suzuki Swift Sport Cup. It's a reverse grid. Ben Erickson, Amy Vincent off the front row. Rob Gibson and Daniel Leenberg from row number two. Craig McRae alongside Brad Lauder from row number three. A row four start for Sam Barry alongside the VNC Cocktails car of Mark Spring. Back to Simon Evans in the Castrol Suzuki. Jamie Gaskin in the LG Suzuki. And it's Christchurch's Chris Cox and Rex McCutcheon from row six. Row seven start for Sean Lawrence. He's alongside Dane Fisher, the new champion, AJ Lauder, and Mark Gibson will be towards the back with Mike Turley from grid position 17. Well, the championship may be over for Dane Fisher taking out the championship for the season, but there is still a huge battle on for second with just 12 points covering AJ Lauder, Mark Gibson, and Mike Turley for that second position in the championship. On board with Mark Gibson. He's looking to tie up the Rookie of the Year title. He'll be starting right from the rear of the grid. And uh, I think this will be uh, this will be exciting, right, as we wait for the lights to go out for the finale. This will definitely be an exciting race. I know Mark Gibson really wants to get second in the championship. Got one stalled on the grid towards the back. And it's Rex McCutcheon that's uh, sitting on the grid on board with Mark Gibson as they charge down into turn number one. So Rex McCutcheon stalling on the grid on board with Gibson. There's Dane Fisher, the new championship champion to his left. Sean Lawrence immediately in front as McCutcheon is going to get pushed off to the side of the track by the Talpo track marshals. It's uh, Ben Erickson out to the early front running. He's had uh, a pretty tumultuous weekend as uh, McRae launches down the inside of Amy Vincent. Yep, Ben Erickson supporting the new H2O graphics. This is like a three wide. And down into turn six. Oh, Mark Gibson, mindful that he's looking for second overall in the championship. Well, this contact, McRae and Vincent again. That is uh, Craig McRae on debut this weekend in the car owned by Hamish Cross, who's managing the Gibson Motorsport team. And has done a fantastic job with those boys and obviously the team. The cars look absolutely fantastic and, and they're definitely a team to be, to be forced to be reckoned with next season. Yeah, so Rob Gibson, he's up into the second position. Had a, I think, a throttle cable issue in the second race that saw him go pit side. There's Dane Fisher, the new champion. And his biggest problem, according to Mark Spring, after race number two and tying up the championship as well. Mark's words were that they, they were looking for a new helmet for Dane. <laughs> as, he was a, as a rather happy man. The fact that his head was getting a little bit too big. Yeah, well, it's been a just winning the championship. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mark Gibson, he's done the late-breaking effort and picked up at least a couple. That's Simon Evans to his left. So Mark Spring was looking for a new helmet for Dane Fisher because he reckons his head got too big after race number two and tying up the championship. Pretty much. <laughs> I don't know, is there an RIGP5 big enough in New Zealand? No, he's a fantastic job. I know Dane will be celebrating at the end of this race, but he just wants to get to the end of this one with a relatively straight car. Yes. Again, all the guys want to, want to pack their cars away straight and obviously do hot laps and a bit of testing throughout the year. And, and build towards the next championship as Dane runs off the track. Yeah, he's creating a new racing line here at Telfa. He's going to lose two spots to Sean Lawrence and Mike Turley. Hasn't it been a fantastic championship between Turley and Fisher? The, the championship lead changed probably seven or eight times over the last three to four rounds. It has been that competitive. And obviously Mike's had some dramas with uh, a penalty after race number one that's really hurt him in the points. But it's been a sensational championship. Yeah, again, with these single mate cars, the championship is always so close. I, I lost count how many times Dane and Mike changed leads throughout the championship and in races, in fact. So these little Suzuki's putting out 92 kilowatt. There's well, we got one going off through the gravel. It's one of the Lauder cars. It's the 15 of Brad Lauder just making contact with the Armco. I thought there for a moment. I just saw the Aegis colours thinking it was AJ Lauder because he is second in the championship trying to fight off Mark Gibson and Mike Turley for that honour. There is AJ to the outside of Sean Lawrence with Mike Turley to his inside. Here's the peak Andy for his replay. There was some contact there from behind. That was certainly one of the Team Gibson cars. I don't know how far back through the field that was. So this is all on. Drive through car 35. That's Mark Gibson. That is Mark Gibson. Mark 
Gibson with a drive through penalty. He was third by three points behind AJ Lauder going into this race and looking to tie up the Rookie of the Year crown. He may have enough points ahead of Chris Cox to still tie up the championship. So that must have been that contact with Brad Lauder. Mark Gibson, I'm sure he'll be aware that he's got a drive through penalty to serve. The drama doesn't stop. The drama never stops in the Suzuki racing category. He'll be kicking himself, uh, but those mistakes happen and he he'll definitely learn from that. So we're on board with Mark now with uh, Simon Evans just in behind. So drive through penalty for Mark Gibson. Advantage to AJ Lauder and Mike Turley, certainly for the final podiums for the championship. But can mix Mark Gibson hold on to enough points to hold off Chris Cox for the top rookie of the year title for the round? Mark Gibson and AJ Lauder were tied at 120, uh, 142 points going into the final race. And AJ Lauder currently scored in the ninth position, two positions clear of Mike Turley. Mark Gibson has had an absolute fly to this race. He's, he's gone from the very back of the grid, P16, now up to P7. So here's the battle for the lead. It is Ben Erickson, chased by Rob Gibson. Ben Erickson's already had a win in this year's championship. Uh, Rob Gibson looking for his first. We've had nine different race winners over the championship in the fourth season of the Suzuki Swift Sport Cup. Yeah, Ben Erickson supporting the new graphics of the H2 Cocoa, pure coconut water, 100% natural and uh, very nice. I wondered what that was. So Ben Erickson looking for his second win in the championship. Rob Gibson coming back after a throttle problem. So there is... The drive through, that'll be for Mark Gibson. We heard that on race radio. Crossing the line in third is Mark Spring. Jamie Gasket up into fourth, so he's on the move. McRae's got shuffled back to fifth on board. Mark Gibson going by his teammates, so hasn't decided to take the drive through penalty as yet. No, he was probably waiting for the flag to come out. So uh, Mark will have to address that in the next couple of laps. Certainly, it's going to drop into the tail of the field. There'll be a big points loss. So we're uh, now watching AJ Lauder and Mike Turley in that battle for second and third overall in the championship. Dane Fisher tied up the championship after race number two, but um, we thought it was a little bit clearer cut, but it was actually only 77 points was the difference going into this race. So he needed 75, but it was the likes of AJ Lauder and Mark Gibson that had actually made more of a gain than Mike Turley as Simon Evans goes up the inside of Craig McRae and Chris Cox is going to try and follow him through there as well. There is Mike Turley. Mike Turley looking to go around the long way. Well, three wide through eight on the run to nine. AJ Lord is in there as well. He's to the outside of Chris Cox as they work their way up the hill off turn number nine. Here comes Dane Fisher. It's that three point close to four wide. Through turn 10 up towards the top corner. Fisher making a little bit of contact there with Turley. Dane definitely hasn't given up on this last race. He'll have a big grin on his face. He'll be enjoying this. Well, the pressure's off. Why, why wouldn't you not enjoy it? So Chris Cox, he's chasing down Simon Evans. So Evans in about the seventh position. Here comes AJ Lauder. So the advantage still with Lauder in that championship. Second place. Does Mark Gibson come into the pit lane? Not this lap. He goes through again, so maybe he's trying to gain as much track time as he can to minimise any loss on the other side. Because I can't, is it, uh, you have to take it within three laps? Four laps are getting shown, the drive through flag? I think it's four laps. So there is Mark Spring in the VNC Cocktails, a somewhat battered VNC Cocktails Suzuki. Yeah, Mark's had a pretty up and down season, had, had some good showings at some rounds and and just took a while to, to get on top of things at others. One of the offs he had this weekend was actually in testing where I think he shortened up Simon Evans under brakes off the end of the back straight, wasn't even in race conditions. Yeah, if you ever watch these boys testing, it's it's like a big race, really. Oh, Mark Spring and Mike Surley disputing territory three wide with Dane Fisher. This could get ugly up into turn seven. Fisher's going to gain out of it. Turley might have just given him a little bit of contact in the rear going up through five. And there's AJ Lauder right on the back bumper of Mike Turley. So a further points advantage there for AJ Lauder in that battle for second behind Dane Fisher in the championship for the 10-11 season. The fourth season of the Suzuki Swift Sport Cup here in New Zealand and about to debut in Australia.
with uh, a fairly big field expected over on the other side of the Tasman. I believe uh, the organisers here, the likes of uh, Paul Berber and the team are heading to Australia to help them out and assist them with their inaugural championship. It's Mark Spring goes down the inside of Dane Fisher. These boys are teammates too, by the way. So <laughs> there's obviously no love lost there. Oh, Fisher, I don't think he'd be laughing. There'd be some interesting conversations going inside the helmet, I reckon. AJ Lord is going to pull up alongside. Turley pulls out of the draft down the inside of Mark Spring. And uh, <laughs> Fisher, in turn, has gone down the inside of AJ Lauder. On the dirty side of the track, oh, Turley just about turned <laughs> over the Motorsport Import Suzuki. How <laughs> much height did he get how, climbing that curb? How close was that? That was quick thinking. He gra grabbed a whole bunch of wheel and, and brought it down back on all fours. But Oh, my <laughs> word, that was high. The altitude record of the series goes to Mike Turley. With his two-wheeling, here's the hydrolink best moment under pressure. How did Mike Turley hold on to this? He's launched the curbs, he's corrected on the wheel and landed it. That is unbelievable. That has to be the hydrolink best moment under pressure. It was that close, the mirror almost touched the ground. Oh, unbelievable. Thanks to hydrolink, thanks to Mike Turley for providing us that action. I tell you what, he won't be grabbing that cur curb again. My word, that was just incredibly high. You could see him correct the wheel to try and settle the thing back down. Good effort, that was quick thinking. He might be a new driver for the Big Ben uh, Ute stunt team after that effort. Where's it settled and back in the mix? There's a race still going on here, believe it or not. Ben Erickson's still leading from Rob Gibson with Jamie Gaskin now all over the back bumper of Rob Gibson. Might be an underwear change after after this race. Oh, last lap board is out while all that was happening. Yeah, I think Mike Turley may be in need of a wardrobe change after this one. Uh, he still scored in sixth, AJ Lauder in eighth. So Lauder sh still should have done enough to pick up second in the championship as Jamie Gaskin goes to the outside of Rob Gibson. Ben Erickson, he's got away from these two and he's going to take out the final race victory. Can Rob Gibson hold on to the second spot? Be one of his best finishes in the championship. I know the Gibson team will be on the balcony clapping him. They'll be a little bit disappointed with Mark's efforts in this one, but Ben Erickson, his second win. Rob Gibson, second. Jamie Gaskin in third. AJ Lord is going to finish ahead of Mike Turley and he will take out second in the championship with a sixth place finish with uh, New Zealand's newest stunt driver Mike Turley in seventh. He should take out third overall for the championship behind Dane Fisher and AJ Lauder. Ben Erickson with his second victory in the Suzuki Swift Sport Cup of the 10-11 season from Taupo's Rob Gibson, Jamie Gaskin in third ahead of Simon Evans, Chris Cox and AJ Lauder. Congratulations to AJ Lauder with that one taking out second overall in the championship behind Dane Fisher. Ben, congratulations mate, and that's what they say, saving the best for last. Yeah, thank you. Obviously we had a bad start in race one, engine blew, and then in race two was all right, but um, no, nah, we, we did good. PC, PC help, helped out a lot through throughout the night fixing the engine, so sort of had to repay him somehow. Mike, the old girl looks a bit battered, mate, but work us through what happened up there through turn 12. Yeah, a uh, bit of stunt driving. I uh, had a run against Mark Spring and had the inside line, so I thought I'd uh, had to do something special to get past him. Unfortunately, I just cut the corner a bit too much and it sent it up on two wheels. And uh, it, was, it was pretty borderline whether it was going to roll or not, but I sort of had the instincts to turn right and bring it down and then just carry on. So we managed to limp it home in the end. There might be a bit of damage there, but she'll be right. So, mate, what you tell us, she was skill that brought it back to Mother Earth instead of uh, just luck? Oh, totally. Uh, done a bit of drifting before, and the stunt driving comes into that, so it's no big deal. Good TV.